I really need to build up this YouTube channel. Didn't really have any content ideas, so figured I'd do a top 10 list, because that's uh, completely original. Completely original. Obviously. Uh, it was taking a while to figure out what kind of subject matter I wanted to cover, but then uh, I remember I got a question from a good friend of mine. And he asked me whom I deem as the top jazz guitarist living today. This is something I've done quite a bit of extensive research on. That's what this video is going to be. Top 10 living jazz guitarists. Of course, this video is completely of my opinion. Uh, this is not the end all be all by any means because I'm not a YouTube commenter or anything like that. But what it is, is just kind of an outline of whom I deem players that have currently changed my life in jazz guitar and music in general. Also, what I think they're impact is on the music community and jazz guitar community as a whole. And in some cases, their historical impact. Jazz guitar isn't nearly as big as it used to be. Um, jazz guitarists certainly aren't in the mainstream as much as they used to be. But with that being said, there are some insanely good players out there that just aren't getting recognition. Players that are way better than some of the best session guitarists in the world or whatever. And some of the best session guitarists in the world are those said players, and they're not getting enough recognition. So without further ado, we're going into my top 10 modern jazz guitarists that are alive. Today. I want to preface also that this is not in any particular order. Uh, some people may see it that way, but it is not. I personally don't like to have tier lists uh, because, you know, it implies that I think certain musicians are better than others, uh, but that's not how music rolls. Music is collaborative. It's about mutual respects. It's about camaraderie, and that's what this list is going to be. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. All right, let's get started with number 10. Number 10 being Mr. Andrew Renfro. Fun fact, I actually had the pleasure of taking a lesson with Andrew Renfro during quarantine, and uh, he is a delightful gentleman. Also giving me a lot of knowledge and a lot of work to play with. This guy truly is a visionary that is currently living of the jazz guitar. I need to stop saying that's currently living. Y'all already know that. Renfro's playing is very bluesy. Uh, he doesn't really use very sh fancy schmancy chord voicings or anything like that, not really any fancy scales, and his technique is rather unorthodox. He's rather an over-the-thumb type of player. He uh, does a lot of like kind of natural picking as opposed to Benson picking, which is what you'll see from a lot of modern players such as Isaiah Sharkey, or of course, George Benson himself. But regardless of all this, he's still a true visionary when it comes to the instrument. And uh, you may or may not know him as him playing with the saxophone legend Braxton Cook. And I had a way of kind of getting into his technique when I asked him in my lesson, and something that he talked about was uh, using modern arpeggios and such. One thing that's incredibly unique to Andrew, and also uh, something that I really like and I try to emulate whenever I play, even remotely the kind of music he plays, is his use of distortion on a hollow body guitar. That's kind of unorthodox, not many people use that, but Andrew does it because he's cool. And it creates a really, really cool sound and just a way of making your lines sound a different way. It's, it's truly amazing what he does there. And he's able to em emphasize chordal playing and he's able to emphasize lead lines and he's able to do just a myriad of different things. Andrew's truly a great guitarist. If you are anywhere near him in the area and are able to see him live, please do that. Again, you, must, you might most likely see him playing with Braxton Cook. Those guys' chemistry is insane. Go check out Andrew Randall. Number nine, I have to be Mr. Ben Yunsen. Ben Yunsen is an English jazz guitarist currently based in New York City. And uh, this dude shreds. <laughs> kind of revolutionizing the Strat in jazz. Certainly a lot of people have played the Strat in jazz, and there's certainly a lot of modern players that play the Strat in jazz. But he, at least in the New York scene, is becoming a player that is known for playing the Strat in jazz. He 
He's also a player that uses distortion very much from a rock perspective, but uh, it's very, very smooth in a myriad of different ways. Uh, his lines are just so clean. Uh, he uses a lot of legato, meaning just left hand only, uh, but he's still a pretty insane picker as well. Uh, and he's just able to create such these fluid lines and playing styles and ideas that are just kind of unheard of to the average ear. You may find him collaborating with Chad Lefkowitz Brown, another New York jazz cat that is just completely destroying the jazz scene right now. He has been for many, many years. I want to say over a decade, I think. Uh, but yeah, you'll see him play along a bunch of projects with him. Uh, ben is most notably known for posting Instagram videos and some educational content, and he also has a lot of useful educational sources for learning the instrument. I personally have two of his volumes on how to practice. I highly recommend getting those books if you're trying to expand your playing and trying to play your normal ideas in the most expansive way as possible. And uh, yeah, Ben needs some man. Check him out. Number eight. It's gonna have to be, again, in my opinion, Jesus Christ, Jalad Hex, 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 Hexel, Hexel, Hexelman, Hex, 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 what the heck? I don't know how to pronounce the last name. I apologize, but Jalad Hexelman. Uh, I discovered him, I want to say, last year during COVID, obviously. He's one of the most pleasant players to listen to on this list, in my opinion. I mean that in which he really knows how to create textures. Uh, his tune Verona, I just love to blast that in the car and just have a good drive. It's it's truly, truly beautiful what he comes up with. And don't let that sway you. He can still certainly shred, of course, as everyone on this list. But yeah, Jalad, he is uh, incredibly, incredibly diverse in his playing and just knows how to make all these soundscapes. Uh, he, of course, has a very insane pedal board uh, that allows him to use these various sounds. Uh, and it's really cool to see how he can apply said sounds to jazz standards. Again, one of the basis, one of the main things off of this list is trying to see how these people have made contributions and kind of changed the way people play jazz guitar or how people would play standards in that environment. And uh, he's certainly one of the leading pioneers in that fashion. Um, he is, of course, based in New York, as are most of those people in this list. Uh, and you can see him playing at Smalls Jazz Club and some of the other premier jazz venues around New York City. Uh, he has an incredibly diverse soundscape, and uh, yeah, check him out as much as possible. Number seven, Mr. Mike Moreno, another New York jazz cat. Uh, just got a lot of them now, don't I? This dude probably has one of the coolest looking guitars on this list. I believe he's playing Marchione or Mancione guitars, I think. I can't remember exactly how to pronounce it. It's an Italian brand that makes very high-end guitars that I will, of course, never be able to afford. Uh, I discovered Mike also around last year during COVID, around the same time as Gillette Hexelman, and uh, they've actually played together extensively on live streams throughout COVID, which is very pleasant to see. Uh, Mike's album, it's incredibly diverse. There's a lot of jazz standards in there that he kind of redoes. His version of Airgen is pretty crazy. Uh, he does a lot of changes there. Uh, his version of April from Paris is also pretty crazy. That's a lot of fun to listen to. Um, also, he's one of those players that is able to effortlessly switch from finger picking to pick incredibly easily. He's able to play some pretty fluid lead lines and he very much sticks to the roots of your Grant Greens, your West Montgomery's, and uh, your Barney Kessels, you know? Very much playing in the pocket, very much playing diatonically, but also able to kind of throw out some insanely wild lines uh, that are very, very, very pleasant to listen to. Another thing that he's known for is his chordal playing, which is also very much in vain of your Grant Greens, or your Barney Kessels, or Joe Passes, your Jim Halls, and uh, whatever random names you can think of. <laughs> anyway, he is very, very talented when it comes to chordal playing, and yeah, that pretty much covers it. There's so many things that you can check out with Mike. Uh, you can check out his albums here, and you can see him playing at various venues across New York City. A uh, lot of fun. Go check him out. Number 
number six. All right, so we're getting into the more technical and advanced players on this list now, as well as people who have made an incredible contribution to music. So buckle up, you're about to see some insane guitar shreddage. Starting it off, we got Mr. Matteo Mancuso. This dude is, uh, well, he just pisses me off. <laughs> As you probably saw in some of these snippets, he uses fingers, just like a bass player would. He doesn't use a pick, because I guess he's too good for it. Okay, uh, this man is a monster. He probably has one of the most fluid techniques on this list. He's able to play anything just so fluidly. You don't really hear any mistakes. You don't hear any fumbles or anything like that with this guy. He's just top of the line, man. And he's covered numerous, numerous, numerous artists from Alan Holtworth, Charlie Parker, to Guthrie Govin. Playing his lines will certainly make you a better player, and I highly recommend checking out his music, and if you're a guitar player, transcribe his stuff, learn his stuff. The dude's approach is so fresh, and will definitely help your way. Number five, we have Mr. Jonathan Kreisberg. Jonathan Kreisberg is probably one of the smoothest pickers on this list. Mateo doesn't count because he uses a different technique, he uses his fingers. But Mr. Jonathan Kreisberg is just insane. Jonathan Kreisberg probably embodies some of the old playing habits of the greats, of your Jim Halls, your Wes Montgomery's, all of that. Um, but he's able to put a modern twist on it. He, in my opinion, is the definition of the modern jazz guitarist. He is able to compose and weave lines like nobody's business, and listening to him is truly, truly a joy. Uh, his solo on I'll Be Seeing You, right? A jazz classic. He's able to incorporate certain lines that are just fun. In addition to that, he's kind of a pioneer of polyrhythmic guitar playing, which is an impossible technique of hybrid picking using a pick and fingers. And his version of Caravan is otherworldly. It is insane. It is galactically, nuclearly insane. It's something to behold. It truly is a wonder of the world. It's just insane what this man can do. And the amount of different rhythms he can play at the same time on just six strings is staggering. Absolutely staggering. Check out his album, One. It is all solo guitar, and it is some of the best solo guitar you will hear since Joe passed. But yeah, please check out Jonathan Kreisberg. He's an insane man. Hi, how you doing? Number four, Mr. Kurt Rosenwinkel. Now, I mentioned at the top of the video that jazz guitarists aren't necessarily recognized anymore as much as they used to back in the day, back from the 40s to the 60s and maybe the 70s. And that is true. However, when it comes to Kurt Rosenwinkel, uh, depending on who you're talking to, he might be the most familiar household name out there. Mr. Rosenwinkel has collaborated on a myriad of different projects with various artists that are very, very famous, uh, and his playing is truly a sight to behold. Mr. Rosenwinkel is also kind of a practitioner of textural playing. His version of Stella by Starlight, which is 17 minutes long, but is truly crazy. Uh, he is able to freeze certain notes and freeze certain chord tongues and solo of them to make his own uh, ethereal compositions, shall we say. And they are a lot of fun to listen to. Uh, his solos are just insane, his picking is incredibly smooth, and he also legatos and sweeps incredibly well. And of course, he is the only guitarist on this list that can rock a cap more than anybody's business. He's certainly paving the way for modern jazz guitar, and he of course is an educator as well. And, 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 insanely, he is the only person on this list that is also a monster keyboardist. Mr. Rosewrinkle truly is a force of nature, and you need to check out all of his music because he's just so, so, so good. Number three is uh, kind of a power play. Uh, wasn't expecting to put him on the list, but he needs to be on the list, and we're sticking with modern and uh, his effect on music and uh, 
someone that is, of course, still living, and this dude fits all that criteria, and that is Mr. Pat Matheny. Pat has been active over many different decades and genres of music and has seen where music is going, but he's certainly a mad scientist when it comes to composition. I mean, just his orchestration projects and uh, any albums where he's involving huge, huge ensembles of, in of insanely different instruments is crazy. He, of course, looks like every villain from Dexter's Laboratory. Amethini, to this day, is modern. Uh, he's been modern even when it wasn't modern day. Uh, and I mean that in the sense where he's able to play lines unlike any other players. He doesn't really stick to the changes. He kind of plays what's right. He kind of plays what he feels. It's incredibly hard to explain. But if you listen to a lot of his playing, it's very much with feel. It's very much with rhythmic feel, and he's not trying to prove anything. He's not trying to do some insane, crazy, wild stuff. What he is trying to do is that he is trying to play what the music deserves. And being the composer that he is, uh, there aren't many people that know how to make the perfect song and what a song needs uh, than him, than Pat Metheny. Pat Metheny to this day is still releasing music. His catalog is insane. Uh, he's of course collaborated with some of the best jazz cats in history. Uh, please look at his different albums because they're just, even though it's one artist, it's just a myriad of different sounds and music and genres that he just absolutely nails. And uh, we are truly, truly blessed to still be seeing him music today. Number two is going to have to be Mr. Julian Lodge. Julian Lodge is a premier Telecaster player uh, and a player of Collings guitars and Collings acoustic guitars and a myriad of other brands. And this dude's playing is so sultry. Very much a fan of counterpoint, very much a fan of classical music and Bach. That is something that is evoked in his playing, but he's also just a good old-fashioned blues rocker. He's also very much into the folk aspect of the guitar, especially the Chet Atkins type thing, and you can hear that in his tune Day and Age. One thing I particularly like about Julian's playing is his ability to make two different lines seemingly play at the same time. Uh, seeing that there are two different guitarists playing when in fact there is one player. That is something that he excels at. It's really, really fun to listen to, and his solo playing is incredible. One thing I really like about Julian is that he is an improviser. He doesn't really write much. Uh, you will see him in interviews and master classes and educational videos and whatnot talking about playing on the spot, composing on the spot, and he will always play something and then he'll tell you outright he doesn't remember what he played. Which is a testament to confidence and just very much saying a statement, very much saying a statement in a conversation, and then of course you might not completely remember what you just said. I don't remember what I said. But nonetheless, he is an insanely good player. He is a faculty at the New School and numerous different institutions. He tours a lot. He does a lot of master classes. Check out Julian Lodge. All right, we've gotten to the point to number one, and that is Joshua Meter. Fun fact, I have also taken a lesson with this dude, and he is also the second person on this list that is around my age and is way better than I will ever be in my life. The Sydney-based guitarist has really, really rocked onto the prog metal scene, actually, despite being primarily a jazzer, thanks to his entry in the Tosin Abbasi Lorada contest, which he absolutely nailed. Josh's playing is truly ahead of its time. He's kind of reinventing picking as we know it. He's inventing solo playing as we know it. And of course, he is a monster transcriber. This dude, in my opinion, is at the top of the list because of just how modern he can be and just how much of a visionary he is. And uh, there's really no one like him in the world right now with that level of play, with that level of professionalism that level of knowledge. He doesn't just excel at one thing, he excels at everything. As far as I know, he's making some new music in July, and he's finally gonna put his own sounds out there, so definitely go check him out. Alright, that's the video.
video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell because the world is ruled by algorithms and we are all slaves to it. I certainly hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make more content like this or what you would like to see. Uh, I hope to cover some things in the guitar world that aren't usually covered on YouTube and hopefully make a name for myself there. But who knows what the future holds. This channel is whatever I want it to be. And uh, yeah, hope you dig it. See you on the flip side.